Hi there. Welcome to the channel. Um, a little over two years ago, I posted a video called Are Horseshoe Crabs Dangerous? And about two, two and a half weeks ago, that video blew up. I think it's sitting at like 3.6 million views right now. Um, insane. And my uh, subscriber count went way up. I didn't, uh, I never intended for that. Definitely never expected it. Uh, you never do, um, especially with a channel like mine. Uh, but I thought I'd use the opportunity to make a follow-up video, um, address things I saw in the comments. <clears throat> so why, uh, the reason I took that video, I, um, well, I live in Indiana and I'd never seen a horseshoe crab before in my life. Love the animals. Um, so I, I took a trip. I took a, uh, I took a two day trip up to Delaware and I spent two nights um, on a beach in Delaware. I won't say where, but, um, it was the middle of June, I think, um, full moon, high tide, perfect time for watching them spawn, watch them spawn, uh, thousands, thousands of them, um, coming up at night. And, uh, both mornings that I was there, I was spending the morning flipping over, uh, horseshoe crabs that had flipped upside down from the waves. And I was watching a lot of people just walk by. They they maybe noticed them and didn't do anything, or they uh, they didn't even notice them. Um, and I'll be honest, that uh, that pissed me off a little bit. So um, I made that video sort of venting some frustration, um, but I also wanted to uh, educate anybody who thought they were dangerous um, that they're not. And that it's safe and okay to flip them over and uh, save a crab, save a life. And um, hopefully, hopefully with, with all those views, um, a few of you uh, will now uh, help a horseshoe crab that needs it in the future. That's what I'm hoping. So um, as far as what I saw in the comments, uh, aside from a particular Pokemon... Uh, the most common comment has to do with the uh, the tail of the of that individual that's broken off in the video. So I have a taxidermied horseshoe crab here, a lot smaller than the one in the video, but it'll do. Um, this is actually referred to as the Telson. It's actually referred to this uh, as the same thing in uh, a scorpion, and I'll get to that. But um, this particular individual had it broken off. I, I, I wish I could say why. I, I have no idea. Um, some people uh, were saying that it may have been uh, broken off for taking out the blood. And maybe that's true. Every video I've seen of it online shows people drawing the blood from that joint between the head and the uh, the abdomen. Um, maybe maybe in China they clip off the tail and take the blood. I, I doubt it, but maybe... Um, what I think is more likely is it's just an injury. It happens. I mean, this is a, this is a long, rigid, um, spike made out of chitin. Um, it's, it's really easy for it to break off from some strong waves or from an interaction with another animal, or maybe just somebody stepping on it and not realizing, you know, uh, accidents happen. So I think that's just an injury. The animal was clearly fine. But um, that then uh, that then goes into the topic of what the Telson is used for. So um, I grew up thinking that uh, that it was used for flipping the animal right side up when it was upside down, um, and so apparently have a lot of people. But uh, that's not what I saw. That's not what I saw when I uh, spent those two days on that beach watching them. Um, not once did I ever see a horseshoe crab use that telson for riding itself back up. Instead, and I'm going to use this little action figure of an isopod here to demonstrate what I saw when they flipped upside down. They didn't bend back like, well, look at that. They didn't bend back like that to um, right themselves. Let me put that tail back on there. Yeah. That's not what they did. Um... Everyone I saw when it was upside down curled like that as its reaction. So from there, I thought it was a misconception. 
um, until I watched some videos online uh, after commenting to some people in my video that they're not used for that. Uh, I watched a video of one that did use it for that purpose. So um, maybe I was right, maybe I was wrong, maybe a little bit of both, and maybe this has more to do with um, us not thinking of evolution the correct way. So, I mean, traits emerge not because, or not, not out of any sort of uh, mindset of optimization. Um, traits more persist in any organism um, purely because it doesn't hinder, uh, it doesn't hinder the individual in survival or in uh, reproduction. If a trait exists and the organism can survive long enough to reproduce and then its offspring can reproduce and so on and so forth, that trait stays. That could mean that particular trait um, is, uh, is, uh, promotes the survival or reproduction of that individual. Um, or it could mean it's, it, it could even be detrimental, but it's just not detrimental enough to keep the species from persisting. So, so saying a particular body part is for this or for that may not be the right way to think about it. Um, I'll take this scorpion, for example. So this particular uh, scorpion, believe it or not, used to be alive and it used to be my pet. Um, it's since died. Rest in peace. But what would you think the tail of a scorpion is used for? I'm assuming you guess that it's used for tackling its prey, for injecting venom, stuff like that, right? Um, I bet you wouldn't guess that it's used for climbing, but that's what I watched this particular scorpion use it for. Um, he would use it to uh, climb up glass and climb up logs and rocks just by like flexing it out and would push the body up and let it climb higher. And so animals use the body parts they're given uh, in any way they can uh, to do whatever they need to. Um, sometimes they think to use it in a certain way, and sometimes they may not. Um, a telson is definitely useful for flipping it uh, right side up when it's upside down. That's if the animal does it. Um, now that goes into instinct. Clearly it can't be that strong of an instinct if I watch so many of them not use it in a way that helped it write itself up. Um, but that's food for thought, right? Uh, it can be used for this, it can be used for that. Some people have also said that, uh, that it may be dangerous, that you can call it dangerous because it has a telson, and the one that I handled was not because it didn't have it. That's not a good way of thinking of it either. This thing doesn't have venom. It is kind of sharp, so if you pick it up and it's wiggling that thing around, just keep it away from your face. It might poke you in the eye. Uh, but unless I take this thing and stab you with it, um, or you, or it's sticking it up in the air on the beach and you are not paying attention and you step on it, then okay, maybe it's dangerous. Uh, but is a tree dangerous because you weren't paying attention to the road and you uh, ran into one? Um, probably not. That's probably not the right way to think about it. So, um, another thing people have talked about in the comments is blue blood. Yes, these guys have blue blood. They have hemocyan, where we have hemoglobin. Um, they both do the same thing. They both transport oxygen throughout the body. Um, hemoglobin uses iron. Uh, hemocyan uses copper. Uh, what happens to iron when it's oxidized? It turns red, and copper, when it's oxidized, turns blue. Um, it is used uh, in the medical field. Uh, it's definitely not my area of expertise, but it's used for sanitizing um, or for showing when there's a pathogen in a certain batch of uh, vaccines, because horseshoe crabs do not have... Um, an immune system, or not like one that we have. They instead have a particular protein, and I don't know if this protein is in the blood cells or is in the uh, the plasma, um, but this protein 
sort of globs around uh, a bacterial cell or a fungal cell or a virus or anything with um, a bonding end that's going to attack the cells. It's a really simple way of, uh, of, of, of pre preventing disease in these animals if the shell gets cracked. And we use it uh, in a lot of ways that saves lives. So yeah, blue blood. The um, two other questions, two other quick ones. Uh, I saw one person ask where the eyes are. They're uh, right there, right there. Here's a close up. Big old compound eyes, just like any arthropod. They actually have 10 eyes, um, but the other eight are hardly visible, even on the living thing. But they're supposedly somewhere right there one behind each lateral eye here, three at the front around this tip here, and three more, I think, right there. They're clearly not that important for the animal if they're that tiny, but that's my personal opinion. Um, and are they edible? Sure, why not? Um, I, watched, uh, I watched a video of somebody eating one, so probably. I don't see why you would, because... Uh, I have to put this thing upside down again. Where's the meat? There's a little bit that's probably inside of the uh, the exoskeleton there. Maybe a little bit in the legs. You could probably eat the gills. Suck something out of the telson there. Uh, there's not a lot to eat, though. So, I mean, do what you will. Do what you want. It's a free country if you live in my country. But um, I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't. But that's me. So uh, I want to kind of talk about then what these guys are and what they aren't. So uh, they are arthropods, right? They have an exoskeleton. That's going to be that's going to include anything that has an exoskeleton, like insects and arachnids, trilobites, uh, the extinct eurypterids. Uh, Myriapods like centipedes and millipedes, anything of that nature, right? The uh, the I think subphylum uh, is Chelicerata, so they are uh, not as closely related to things like crustaceans. So not as closely related to this isopod, nor are they that closely related to crustaceans like this uh, mangrove lobster. They're not even that closely related to trilobites, despite the resemblance. Uh, but they are, they do share a phylum or subphylum with uh, eurypterids and arachnids like spiders and scorpions and a few other extinct um, chelicerata that look somewhat like them but um, aren't as famous. But they, uh, they separated from the rest of the chelicerata around, I think it's about 450 million years ago. So you're talking about the late Ordovician. Um, and to give a little perspective on that, uh, I think that's around when the first jawed fish uh, were, were evolving, right? Or, or getting close to it. it Might've even been, been before, but you're, there's, there's definitely no amphibians and fish didn't look like what they do today. There was no sharks, um, definitely no reptiles or birds, uh, nothing you're going to rep, uh, recognize today aside from different shelled animals, um, brachiopods, sponges, crinoids, um, jellyfish, um, things that we'd refer to as primitive. And so 450 million years, that's a, that's a long time. Um, so a lot of people have said, and, and rightfully so, that they are related to scorpions and spiders. Um, but it's not right to say that they are, are closely. I bet, put big quotations on that. Um, because I guess that depends on how you define closely. But given that long of a distance and how much has happened in time, I, I wouldn't personally use the term closely related. But they, they, are, they are the next of kin. Um, but that also leads into another topic, which is that these guys, they haven't changed much. They, um, they don't look like exact copies of what they, uh, what they did in the Ordovician 
or the Silurian or the Cambrian, or they, they, they look kind of eerily similar to what they might've looked like in the Jurassic though. So these guys have been referred to as living fossils for a really long time. Up until kind of recently, I've heard some professors and a lot of YouTubers try to uh, get rid of this term living fossils, not just for horseshoe crabs, but for um, really quote unquote primitive looking uh, animals in general. And I kind of want to criticize that. Um, because as far as I've been alive, fossils had the word fossil has been used to refer to anything that um, was evidence for past life, past ecosystems. So that could be direct fossils like this trilobite that is more or less a cast of what the real thing was. Uh, the organic material decays and is slowly replaced with uh, minerals that leave more or less what the animal looked like. Um, or there's trace fossils, footprints, burrows, uh, coprolites, other stuff like that that isn't the organism specifically or directly, but it is evidence of their existence, of them interacting with the environment. And then there's living fossils. I think it's a good term, and I think it's a good term because uh, so many of these uh, these organisms that we use that term on, or that we have used that term on, uh, do represent very closely uh, ancestors of theirs that uh, played a similar, if not the same, role in their respective ecosystems then as they do now. Um, these horseshoe crabs, they've been coming up on the beaches uh, all around the world, uh, middle summer for millions and millions and millions of years. They were doing it when the mammoths were around. They were doing it when dinosaurs were around. They were doing it long before all of that. More or less exactly the same thing that they do now. They're detritivores. Uh, they're feeding on decaying, uh, decaying uh, organic matter on the uh, benthal, benthic level of the ocean and they're coming up and they're spawning every summer and they lay their eggs a lot of animals rely on those eggs today migrating birds and as far as use as a living fossil we can use that and say maybe other organisms relied on those those eggs uh, on beaches as well every summer so because they can give us insight into uh, past ecosystems and what extinct organisms might have uh, done uh, in in react in uh, interacting with the ancestors of modern horseshoe crabs. I think living fossil is a good term, and I think it's a valid term, and I think it's a poetic term. And that's all I have to say. If you have any more questions, um, ask them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm thinking about doing more videos like this on uh, various... Uh, topics on natural history and uh, if you've got any ideas of what I can talk about feel free to pitch um, until then have a good one